Lee. What we're going to talk about is the students, because I didn't mention the kids at all, except for the grass being greener on the other side or whatnot. I was just more indirectly mentioned in that first video. But what about the students? Aren't the kids more disrespectful than ever? Shouldn't that discourage you from actually teaching into public education today? And you could teach at a charter school, but I never taught at a charter school. I'm only going to speak what I know, but in public education right now. So here's what I have to say about that. Pros and cons. Some schools will have great students, but horrible parental involvement, meaning that parents will be. There was a teacher that gave a, a younger black lady on YouTube or whatnot. She gave an actual anecdote about her experience and her parents being like way too involved to where they would. They was actually involved in the student gossip, and it was it was just messy. You know, the kids were. It, it seen on the surface, and this was a Christian school of all things, and I'm a Christian myself, but this makes us look bad. All right. It was a Christian school of all things, but they, you know, the kids were so, they were just disrespectful in a totally different way. Not in a ghetto way, in a very obnoxious and, and arrogant and entitled way. And I think that's actually worse than when you're actually teaching the, um, the, lower, the lower socioeconomical group of kids. And the reason why is that because when you're teaching with kids who parents have some affluence then you have you get all sorts of threats legal threats i'm gonna sue you why did you do this to my child all this harassment indirect harassment all this stuff you have to be really careful of that that could probably endanger you more than just working at a at a campus where it seems like it's the opening scene on lean on me all right you know we're not even gonna talk about that because i was scary too but you know if you're working at a campus that's in need of a turnaround you, you probably have more leeway at that campus, believe it or not, than you would just because these kids seem more well behaved. All right. So there's pros and cons. You have to kind of figure out what you're willing to deal with and just go through that. But if you're teaching an elective, then you really shouldn't really you really need to not complain about anything. You need to be grateful for teaching this elective because a lot of campuses do get their funding cut where they don't have any electives, barely any electives at all outside of your like theater arts or your choir and some athletics. You know, that would be it or band for this most part. But for the most, but people are starting to adopt and take their tech program seriously because of the influx of technology. Like how do we have all these things that's out right now and we're not preparing kids from a public education standpoint? which is why people do coding boot camps and they do the self-taught route. So there, it's not, there's no, you know, traditional standard um, pathway into getting to those things outside of majoring in computer science. So, you know, pick your poison on that and for, for the for pros and cons. And I would say this, focus on the four pillars, which is classroom management, building that student rapport and relationship, building your lesson plans and your grading. Structure is key. I cannot say that enough. And I, I mentioned this in jest in that first video that I did, which we're going to get to that at the end of the video here. But your structure has to be in place. Teachers mess up because they don't know how to implement structure. They get so bogged down by the hype by getting sent all these emails and they don't know how to prioritize. They just think everything's a priority just because their superiors send it to them. No, you have to be able to. And this is going to come in time. You're not going to know because you don't know what you don't know. And you're not going to automatically know what's a priority and what's not. But you have to make that a priority to figure out what's a priority. You have to. Because if you don't, you're going to get eaten alive. You're going to think everything's important. You're not going to be able to figure out what do I need to do first? What can I put off? This isn't really important, anything like that. All right. Sometimes even when some of your superiors set these deadlines and you still don't get it done, you're not going to lose your job at this day and age. They need you. All right? They, they really need you. And even if you seem like you can get fired fast, you better have, you know, something going on on the outside right now, which I didn't really talk about. But I guess that would be a bonus item. But. If they seem like they, they want to get rid of you, more than likely, chances are they're not, unless you're that bad, all right? Unless it doesn't seem like you're growing anything else um, and you're crying about receiving support. Let me tell you this about support. You don't expect any support whatsoever. You need to, if you're going to be in this field, you need to learn some things and, and take the initiative on your own in order to be successful as a teacher. You're going to have to read some books or watch some YouTube videos or, or take initiative to visit some a real teacher's classroom to see what they're doing and you're going to have to make the strengths and step ups on your own. Reason teachers fail is because they're expecting support and they want to blame somebody else because they didn't get the support that they was expecting. All right. 
And I and I was in that same position, you know, earlier. When I look back, it was my fault because I didn't take the initiative and I was like crying and all this other stuff. I didn't get support, but it was really my fault. You know, I take full responsibility of that. And that's something that now I just share with people. You have to take ownership of your own of your own teacher development. Like we tell the kids, they have to take ownership of their learning. You have to take ownership of you being a good, solid teacher. And you have to learn fast what's a priority and what's not. So you don't feel stressed out and feel like you got so much to do and there's so much on your plate that I'm just swimming. I just feel, I feel like I can never seem to do enough. BS. You can do enough. And these are the four pillars you need to work on. I used to work at Walgreens and my manager then told me to focus on the fundamentals because I didn't know how to focus or what, what to make a priority. Like everything seemed important, but the fundamentals was making sure that the store was full customers, the basic uh, departments of the retail store that needed to be filled with items stayed full and that the money was right. Those were the fundamentals. That's what mattered. All right. The care if your manager is mad at you because you didn't do something on his little or her list. Make sure the fundamentals are taken care of in the store and that the store looks nice and it looks good and go from there. All right. And, and that's just that. You got to stand. If somebody yells at you, don't be concerned about that. Take um, not pride. That's not the word I want to look for. Take pleasure in knowing that you did something, that you set goals and that you can feel good at the end of the day when you leave, that you hit those your own personal goals and that you stand strong in that. That's what's going to matter. But these are the four pillars that I call in education that you need to make sure you're strong. If your classroom management is horrible, you will not have any success in the classroom. You need to have structure. You need to put systems in place for every little thing almost. The biggest systems for me is how kids enter my room and how they exit. Those are the two important pillars uh, underneath classroom management that I need to make sure that kids have an understanding of. And other systems get developed as time goes on, which shows like restrooms, for example. How do I actually want to structure restrooms? And I really don't, you really don't know that until you see the problem and you could attack the problem head on. So I saw restrooms. I wasn't anticipating restrooms to be an issue. But now I see restrooms as an issue. This is the system that we're going to put in place in order to solve that. So since some systems can only be put in place when the problems actually arise. All right. Because you're not going to know if they're a problem until the problem presents itself. So, you know, you, you want to make sure of that. But these these things coming from time and experience, you have to allow yourself to make these mistakes. But you have to figure out the systems immediately for those mistakes and implement them as fast as possible so you can get better as a teacher. No more Mr. Nice Guy. Don't sit up here and try to be the the uh, uh, head in the clouds teacher and, and thinking that you're going to save everybody. The whole Hollywood outlook of the, the you know, Mr. Clark laying on me at the end of the movie, like putting your hand on your shoulders and looking like Superman. Get that crap out of your head. Like set a structure. You know, I'm not telling you not to be you. If you're a very fun person, very friendly person, you can still be that friendly person. But you better figure out how to put some base in that friendliness. All right. Put some base in that friendliness. Figure out how to be stern and figure out how to be assertive. You don't have to be mean or aggressive, but you need to figure out how to actually put your foot down when it comes to kids and, and hold and hold them accountable. All right. Strive to be consistent every single day with these things. I'm not the most consistent person, but I'm more consistent in the classroom because it calls for me to be. By necessity, I have to be consistent and I'm more forward that with that or every other aspect of my life i'm very inconsistent which is unfortunate but that's something i'm working on but with teaching it it calls for me for that because if i'm not consistent i won't survive and you'll find that to be very mandatory as well when you actually teach so you need to make consistency a very mandatory thing all right get legal representation in the form of teacher organizations that protect teachers from wrongful incidents and that comes from groups like uh atpe here in texas uh, after, if I said that correctly, I'm just spitting out acronyms right now, but those are organizations that teachers get signed up with because if there's any wrongful termination or accusations or students lying on you or whatnot and accusing you, all these false accusations just be thrown around, you need that protection. All right. So you need to get signed up with that and you need to get that taken care of as well.